1898, in Kensington, Minnesota, a discovery was made that could change North American history forever. A recently arrived Swedish immigrant called Olaf Olman was digging up new trees in his newly acquired land when he found a very large rock containing mysterious carvings. After further inspection, these carvings turned out to be Nord's runes, and the reading on this was that eight Gotlanders and 22 Northmen on this acquisition journey from Vidland far to the west. We had a camp by two shelters, one day's journey north from this stone. We were fishing one day. After we came home, found ten men red from blood and dead. Ave Maria, save from evil. Now on the side of the stone it read, There are ten men by the island sea to look after our ships, 14 days journey from this peninsula, year 1362. Now of course, this instantly raised suspicion as to whether this was true or not, and a whole host of historians came out either defending or going against and claiming this was in fact a fraud, many of them notable, and most of them did in fact decide after further analysis that this was a fraud, although there was one man who was called Hjalmar Holland who did not believe it was a fraud and put forward several pieces of evidence that it could actually be relating to a journey undertaken by a man called Paul Knutsson, who was authorised in 1355 by the king of that time of Denmark and Norway, who authorised a trip to Greenland to ensure that the people there hadn't turned away from Christianity, and that this could be a possible date for when they did actually go over and then continued on past Greenland, where there were renegade Greenlanders living in North America, and that that's a reason for this stone. But then we have the question, did they actually go off on this expedition? Because while we have evidence that there might have been this expedition, that they were planning one, we don't actually have any evidence that they did. And these were very turbulent times in Norway during this period. As, there's, as well as this, if it was true, it would mean that the furthest European settlement or Norse settlement after the one from the Viking Age in Lons or Medou in the north on Newfoundland would be much further south in Kensington, Minnesota. But this distance does offer up questions. Of course, it's not exactly a place you would expect to find people travelling there by boat, which is surely how they would have got there. Now, of course, you can get there through the Great Lakes if you travel down Lake Winnipeg and then across the Red River, but you still have to travel across land. And of course, you have to factor in hostile Native Americans, which is the reason why the Vinland settlements and ultimately the Greenland settlements for the Norse would have failed. So you'd question why they would end up in Kensington, as well as why would they actually bother? Now, of course, it's not something you just do writing out a huge runestone. These things take time. And this runestone, if it was real, would be one of the longest in the world. To compare this to, say, Orkney, where there were people who wrote in Orkney on Mace Howe, which is one of the old prehistoric sites, which is where a crew of Norsemen sheltered during a storm, they only wrote very short runes when they were sheltering there for a night. Now, of course, if these people are in unexplored territory, hundreds of miles away from the nearest settlement and trying to find renegade Greenlanders, then what on earth are they doing carving out this huge runestone, which would have taken probably a few days to finish? Now then we get on to the point that actually we have to look at the text on the runestone and this also brings us with a few problems regarding its accuracy. The first of which is this umlaut, which are the two dots above the O. And the, problem, the reason this is a problem is that it's featured on the runestone, and obviously the date on the runestone is 1362. However, the umlaut O wasn't found in Swedish until the 16th century, which makes this too new to be put on the runestone. Now then, we look at the use of the runes for J and N, the type of N being too late, and the J having gone out of fashion. So these were too old. They'd gone out of fashion a few hundred years before the 1300s. Now, as well as this, we have some problems with the wording that are used on the runestone. So, for example, the Uktolesfart uh, is a voyage of discovery. However, this word only entered the Scandinavian languages because of the Dutch word opdagen and the Plattdeutsch word opdagen. And I'm not sure how, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. As well as this, we have Dagsriese, which is meant to be something like a day's journey. However, this wasn't very common in Old Norse at all. Instead, we have the Dagsfarth, which is a much more common way of saying that in Old Norse. So it has inconsistencies throughout. Not to mention the fact 
that of course he was a Swede and he'd studied runes at school and the type of runes that he used in the inscription or that were found on the inscription, giving away my own bias there, um, were from the part of Sweden that he had emigrated from specifically. So it's very convenient indeed as well as the fact that he actually owned a book on runes inside his house and of course the people in that area, Minnesota, lots of Scandinavians settled there. They were still looking to be accepted by the American population, so maybe something like that would be useful for them to say, oh look, maybe we are the original inhabitants here from hundreds of years ago. Not to mention the fact that there is of course something political in play. As I was mentioning, lots of them came from uh, Scandinavia and Minnesota, and at the time there was a lot of tension between Norway and Sweden, who were at that time still in a union. And this tension would eventually lead to Norwegian independence from Sweden in 1905, but obviously the Swedes didn't want this. So then it's funny that you have this story about Swedes, 22 Jotlanders, so from uh, Jotland, uh, that is the island in Sweden, and obviously the Norwegians that they mention. You suddenly have these people working together and they are suddenly showing up in America, it's a little bit suspect that this is happening at the same time as this friction is going on in Scandinavia between those two peoples. So, uh, all in all, it's a bit of a uh, an unsure one about this runestone as well. But then again, we do find some evidence turning up from time to time that does support things on the runestone. One of the criticisms before would have been that there was a dotted R which was found, and that hadn't been found anywhere else. Up until 2005, when on Gotland, this island that they do claim 22 of them came from, there was in fact a runic inscription found with the dotted R just as it was used on the runestone in the Minnesota runestone. So this does then question if it is all a fake or how much of it is fake in the end. So thank you very much for watching. This has been my video on the runestone found in Minnesota, the Kensington runestone and some of whether it's real or not. I know this has been a little bit of a different video but I, I was reading about it and I thought why not make a video about it because it is quite interesting. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment anything you like below, ask any questions or anything like that and don't forget to tune in again next Saturday or Friday for some more History with Hilbert.